Hey there, guys. Welcome to Bedtime Stories with Brad and Braden. I am Brad. I am Braden. And this week's edition comes from Pro Wrestling Illustrated's PWI 500 edition, December 1991. And the interview is press conference with one Johnny B. Bad. So, yeah. I will be Johnny B. Bad, as Braden does Andy Rodriguez and... Craig Peters. Craig Peters, correct. We've had Craig Peters before. So after leading Doom to the WCW World Tag Team title, manager Teddy Long was slowly watching his mini empire unravel. Early this year, Ron Simmons and Butch Reed had a violent split, leaving the former referee without any protégés at his disposal. Long tried to rebound by bringing a huge one-man gang into WCW, but the maniacal, maniac, maniacal giant proved to be too hard to handle. Now Kevin Sullivan is OMG's advisor, so what could long do. He decided to get bad. Johnny be bad, that is. The Scarillos long has found on the sport. Most flamboyant personalities in the flashy Macon, Georgia native. Never bad as introduced. 50s style rock and roll blares from the arena speakers and the pompadour sporting rule breaker struts down the aisle, covering in frills and feather boas. He appears more than a bit effeminate, effeminate until he begins wrestling. In the ring, Bad proves he's all man. A former amateur boxing champion, Bad displays the punching power that he claims once knocked out current heavyweight contender Razor Ruddock. He also got some rule-breaking skill, as the rookie has already scored big victories over Terrence Taylor and PN News. <clears throat> However, it's Bad's post-bout antics that have enraged fans the most. After Johnny pins his foe, Long hands Bad a set of red Velcro lips, Bad then places the lips on the, the KU wrestler as Long blows kisses to the fans. Editor-in-Chief Craig Peters and Associate Editor Bob Smith and Andy Rodriguez travel to Atlanta to interview the elusive Bad. The glitter-covered grappler agreed to the conversation, but only while he was getting his hair permed at a local salon. The resulting concussion turned out to be one of the wildest press conference interviews ever craig peters johnny we appreciate your time but i wish we could have found a different venue for our conversation the blare of these hair dryers and the smell of all these chemicals is killing me oh hush craig hey a man of my demeanor my debonair demeanor must look his best at all times that's why i came in today for a facial haircut and manicure I can tell from your ratty old old cuticles that you've never had a clipping in your life. So sit back and watch a man of culture and class get a makeover. It just makes me tingly all over. Bob Smith says, We're all thrilled that you're feeling so good, but you must be thrilled with the way your career has progressed. You've only been a pro wrestler for a few months, but you've already become a contender to the U U.S. and TV titles. Well, that what did you expect? Well, I decided to enter this sport. I didn't want to languish in no jive prelim matches for months. No way, Daddy. I've got too much talent and pizzazz for that. You see, when you're as pretty and talented as I am, you just naturally come to an organization like WCW and take over. But naturally, I needed just a little help to push me. Get my juices flowing. Andy Rodriguez. I take it you're talking about Teddy Long. Hey, you're pretty smart, Dandy Andy. That's right. I'm talking about Reddy Teddy, the greatest manager anywhere. He's the guy who made champions out of Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. So imagine what he's going to do for me. The only problem that Teddy's had during the past couple of years is that his men never appreciate him the way that they should. From that big old ugly bear, Norman, to Sid Vicious, to Simmons, nobody ever gave Teddy credit for being a genius. But I do. and We make an unbeatable team. We're glorious and um, uproarious, Peter says. I'm glad you said that that because you really do have fan, fans question your ma mascul masculinity. Yeah. Mascu ma question your masculinity. There you go. Say what? That's crazy. Anybody who can't see I'm 100% purebred, natural-born lover's man has to be loco in the cocoa. I could have been the world's greatest boxer if I wanted to. I could have been a fine baseball or football player if I wanted to. But that's not what I wanted to do. 
No, man. I always wanted to be a wrestler, and now I'm a great one. Thanks to the firm and steady guidance of my man, Teddy. Rodriguez? I think you're skirting the question, so to speak. I'm among too many who are disgusted by the Velcro kiss routine. Not only is it insulting to your defeated opponent, but the kind of tomfoolery has no business in a part in a wrestling ring. Oh, listen to you getting all puffy with me. Don't take things so hard, Junior. You see, I'm trying to get under everybody's skin around here. When a young man's been in a match with Johnny B. Bad, he'll sure know it. Because he'll have to lump on his head and a big old set of lips on his cheek. I want folks to get mad at me because I wanted to be noticed. And pretty soon, I'll have all the officials so angry that they'll start giving me some title matches for those TV and U.S. belts. And maybe even the world title. Rodriguez. But you're already had some matches matches against Steve Austin for the TV belt. You're both rule breakers, but it seems that that man doesn't like you all that much, does he? Seems he is, he's as disgusted by you as I am. Nah, he's just jealous. He's been buying that Lady Blossom Valet of his some of the tackiest ring attire I've ever seen in my life. Where's the frills? A beautiful lady needs beautiful garments, not J.C. Penny glad rags. So, Blossom, I started trading fashion tips, and for some reason, that boy got all puffy with me. Almost won that TV title for him because, like you, he took me a little bit less seriously than he should have. And that's the point I've been trying to make to y'all. I may be the prettiest rocker since Little Richard, but I'm a serious, dedicated athlete, too. Look at this body. No wonder everybody swoons when they sashay down the aisle. Bob Smith. Right, but you've also raised the ire of Big PN News, who who outweighs you by more than 140 pounds. Seems the big rapper has more against you than just your taste in music. You call that tuneless heart crap he listens to music? That's not real music. It's just talking, and he's not a real wrestler. He's just moving his arms and legs in a pale imitation in what a fine athlete such as myself does. And have you seen the waistline of that porker? It's got to be at least 50 inches around. He's a fat tub of goo, and I'm going to squeeze him like a tube of toothpaste so his guts ooze out all over the ring. Then after I've slimmed him down, I'll wipe him out with a big right fist. Voyola, no more, fat boy. Peters. PN's a lot tougher than, than that, I can assure you. But you really surprised me when you said you had your sights set on WCW World Title. Do you really think you can hold your own with with Lex Luger? Frankly, I think he'd eat your lunch. You boys keep putting me down like that, and I'll have big old Lucretia the Manicrest pick you all up and carry y'all out in the alley. I know this, that some people might think I'm bragging, but I'm more than ready for sexy Lex right now. He's got a decent posse in Mr. Hughes and Harvey Raceway. Rodriguez? That's Harley Race. Are you sure you know that's your that's that's your you you're mm -hmm. dealing with? Totally. So what if I don't know how much about that old timer? I know all about Luger, and I watch his matches constantly on videotape. He's big and he's bad, but he can be had. I see holes in his style. You can drive a Volvo through. I'm not going to tell you boys what they are, cause y'all be blabbed his weakness to every cootie out there. But I'm going to bide my time, work my way up the ratings, and make my challenge. And when I'm done, I'll be the most colorful world champion this sport's ever seen. But that belt, it's so tacky. I think I'll paint it pink. Bob Smith says, You can't paint that belt if you, if you, if you don't win it. And you've got, got a long way to go before you get to that stage. I know a lot of wrestlers in WCW who are aching to wipe that smirk and and that rough rouge. right off, that rouge right off your face. Just let them try. I'll pop them right in the mush and leave them for dead. Right now, Reddy Teddy and I have a plan that's going to shake WCW off its foundation, step by step. I'm creeping up the ladder and I'm beating everybody that's come into my path. I've annihilated Austin, negated news, and soon I'm going to lock 
Lombast Luger. The whole WCW is my oyster, and I'm the biggest pearl you're ever going to find. Just crank up the tunes and turn me loose. Peter? Not right now, because I see your your stylus is ready for, for your blow drying. Good luck, Johnny, but I think your mouth is writing a check your body can't can't cash. Oh, hush. There we go, guys. That's this week's edition of Bedtime Stories with Brad and Braden. From the Pro Wrestling Illustrated's PWI 500, December 1991. You can check us out on YouTube at Brad's Collection and Braden's Toy Show. We'll see you next time. Check us out at onewrestlingvideo.com. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.